Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Let's do a Chanel unboxing. In these tough times we're in, let's try to light, uh, lighten up the mood and find some stuff that we're very passionate about. But we're going to keep this really light. Um, you can check out the other video that's going to be out. I will film it after I unbox this, uh, where I get into detail specific reasons why this particular product was purchased so stay tuned for the link for that okay now look at this the black classic Chanel tissue paper I love how they do the plissé here it almost uh, divine okay loving that let's take that out Ooh, thank you Chanel I got a little presents sycamore and beige sycamore and beige in the probably eau de parfum concentration why do I even say probably of course they don't do Eau de Toilette anymore. Thank you, Chanel. We're loving, always loving freebies, no matter where they come from. Let's take this a little bit more away. Oh, yes, of course. We have our microfiber cloth, which, well, I might put the, well, Let's just say I can't use this to clean whatever's in here. You're going to see why in a second. How are you liking this background? This is a very, very special piece and it fits totally to what's coming. We're going Renaissance. We're going almost Baroque here. We're going in a very, very special mood. Um, very special mood. But before we talk about the mood, let me just say thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. Over on Patreon, you get to see this video before it hits YouTube, and it's ad-free on Patreon while ads run through the video here. In general, Super Deco all spelled together on Patreon, you get to see videos that don't hit YouTube at all, or premiere first there, then come to YouTube, but also you get to see extended versions of the videos, and those extended versions and the extended bits of the video never come to YouTube. They're only available to Patreon. And most of the videos that you see here are longer on Patreon, including this one. Now let's see what's in the box. I wonder if I should... Ah, let's just pull it. Let's just do it fully full of pleasure. So I hope everybody's doing well, uh, and I hope everybody's enjoying. White usually tends to, you see, make everything much darker. So we're going to get out of the white pretty soon, and we're going to go back to the colors. Ooh, what's in here? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm always speechless. These little bags, are you kidding me? I mentioned Renaissance, right? Look at this little guy. This little guy. It's a little, it's a little guy. The 255 reissue royal blue slash navy velvet with aged gold hardware. As you touch it, it leaves a mark. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, uh, love at first sight? Yes. Love at first sight and love forever. Let's take the box away. By the way, my sales associate was so nice. So these uh, come with, you know, these kind of the bland cotton pouches. But put this aside because I was given this uh, as an extra I I got that I mean it's for the small timeless classic and uh, not timeless classic for well also for the timeless classic but it's for the small uh, 255 so the pouch is a little bit bigger than this it doesn't matter uh, definitely want the microfiber cloth to keep this because anything rougher might dent it long term but look at the beauty and the depth of this blue and how it absorbs light are you kidding me? This is so historic and um, 
it's also a dust magnet so I'm gonna have to always keep it clean because it's a very dark blue velvet I'm not sure if it's silk or if it's uh, a blend of cotton and acrylics I mean if it were silk great but silk is very delicate I would almost kind of want this to be some other material but it just feels to the touch luxurious as F. Okay, let's take the box away. And now I'm going to... Where did I put the box? Here somewhere. I'm going to um, take off the protection paper for the chain. So cute that they wrapped it with the sticker. Very nice of them. I love the care, the attention to detail, and the love put into this. Okay, oh. now, inside shows us also where this beauty was manufactured. We have leather on the inside, and the leather is kept navy. The dark hue of leather to match the outer side of this bag. I mean, I set the lights in a way that over there were a little bit... Um, darker and here we're lighter so you see it reflecting light in different ways I prepared for that um, it's made in France of course it's made in France I wouldn't I wouldn't go to Italy for this bag no pun intended I just oh my gosh now in this situation it sounds terrible to say that nothing against Italian bags I think Italian manufacturing is wonderful but a classic heritage Chanel bag, 255, it was born in Paris, well, uh, on the outskirts of Paris, but the design was born in Paris, made by Coco, designed by Coco, so this one has to be made in France for me. Now, the material is so thick, the the velvet is, is so thick, so that actually this one did come folded, but it, it opens up on its own, so you know how they come like this, with the fold. Uh, this one just keeps opening up on its own because it's just so juicy, voluptuous, and it's so plump in itself that it, it just uh, opens up. Now, I'm I'm in total awe of this bag, so I could just blabber on about the beauty of it, but let's get to a couple of really precise points. As we do that, I'm putting on my gloves for the occasion because, but they're white. This could be an issue with the lighting, but let's see, because I'm going to, uh, well, you're going to see what's going to happen. Okay, so I've noticed some people on YouTube making videos on these 255 bags. People still don't understand that they come folded. So if these people that make these videos are by accident, coincidence watching me, just to let you guys know, some people have been saying, oh, they're damaged, they're not made properly, what's this dent here? If you're paying for luxury, you shouldn't have the dent. Well, the makers of this bag go through extra work to bend it, to fold it. It's supposed to be folded this way. So it's not a mistake. It's actually how the bag is made. It's an extra step made to make the bag even more special. And to make it look like it was found in a drawer of your grandmother. And it's like still, you're, you're, you're discovering a treasure. That's the idea. Why the gloves? Well, all of this renaissance mood, uh, you're going to notice, I'm going to show you... This is the addition to my Chanel family. I'm going to show you in my Chanel family is quite big, but uh, I have started purchasing basically mainly uh, fabric, like material bags by Chanel because they are the best. They're, they're just, the first 255 bag was in Jersey, you guys. Uh, so Chanel loved bags made in, in fabric more than in leather for herself. Um, much more elegant, always warm to the touch. Hey, they're just plus Chanel and fabrics. I mean, you can't beat it. So, an addition to the family would be my small, uh, the mini, sorry, the mini square in Jersey. Also, this one is made in France. You could check out, that's why I see the gloves because I'm getting to a lot of these fabric uh, version bags. Uh, you could check out my unboxing and review of this one, also on my channel. And um, let's put it backwards like that. And then, then we have this treasure here um, from the Metier Da collection. So this one was, I mean, it's it's a 
it's a classic. This one is in gold. It's like a pale gold or champagne gold. Actually, it's a pale gold um, hardware. But the Jersey version, very rarely is it made. This one is also leather on the inside. But uh, So, I purchased it in 2016. However, it's made, I'd, at the moment, since 2016, it wasn't made anymore. So, I, I don't know when Chanel will remake it. But I highly recommend the Jersey version. I'm still waiting for Chanel to redo this one in Jersey. Because that's definitely going to also end up in my collection. But this thing... So we got velvet, jersey, here we got tweed. Tweed, which plays with a lot of different materials. We got the velvet there as well. We got silk materials. We got wool. We got um, lurex there. We got cottons. I mean, it's, this is incredible. This is from the Metier Da collection, uh, 2019. It came out in June. Karl Lagerfeld's last Metier Da collection inspired by New York slash Egypt. This one, to die for, we got this bronzy gold interior. I mean, it, it decadence to the utmost highest degree. Of course, this one is also made in France. So here are the three kind of, you know, the, the, the fabrics, the, the Chanel bags and fabric. It, it's the most beautiful thing. And when they stand together, and I'm seeing them for the first time, all three together, because I just unboxed this one for you. It, no, <laughs> it's just mind blowing way more beautiful than, than the leathers uh and of course reassuring because on the inside they have leather so yes they are delicate but velvet wears very well when you as you use it as it gets a little bit of patina it becomes even more aged it gets that look like it comes from another time from the renaissance period it's just amazing and baroque as well this is quintessentially Coco Chanel. This is as close as we can get to her design aesthetic and DNA. But what I also wanted to show you, so let's put these away delicately for now. The first, so this is the mini single flap 255. I love the fact that it's single flap. Uh, the first one released was during the release of the Metier Da collection, the Egypt slash New York version. Uh, collection. Uh, so this one came out in June. I bought this one in Rue Cambon 31. This one is exactly folded as it should be. Flat and folded and I'm keeping it that way. This one can't be because of all of the velvet. It's, it's much thicker. But it's the same bag, just uh, two renditions of it. So when we make it out of fabric, you see, we can't really squish the top like this, like it's supposed to be. It stays more rounded, which is also fine. This one is so cute. It's like a little candy the way it is. So it's fine. It's the nature of it that doesn't allow it to squish. But the leather version is just delicious, supple and shiny. It's also gorgeous. This one is the rare example. Chanel really rarely does this champagne gold, they call it. Not aged uh, hardware, but gold. And they did this because this was the first one they made in this size. Single flap also made in France. You could check out, by the way, the unboxing of this one as well as the review of this one also on my channel. Um, but to celebrate the launch of the 255 in its mini form, the first edition was made with the gold champagne hardware to also uh, recall and not to recall, but just in honor of the first bag that Chanel made because Chanel's first 255 also had the glistening gold hardware. It didn't have the aged. The aged hardware came later to kind of, when Lagerfeld in 2005 brought back the 255 and called it the reissue because he reissued the 255 back in 2005, he added this aged gold just to kind of, you know, double state the fact that, well, it's it's found, it's from the archives, it's a treasure piece, so the, the gold has aged with time. That's the idea. So all the subsequent bags to the first mini with the glistening gold, you know, have, I mean, they're going through other changes and processes. More will come along as time passes. Um, but uh, all the ones subsequent to this one that I've seen have the aged gold hardware. Um, 
which is fine. Now, another thing I wanted to point out is the stitching. A lot of you have told me, but Jacob, you made this video about the 255 reissue. You could also check out that video on my channel. The classic size as well as the medium, which equals the jumbo in pricing terms. So both of them, I have compared them. I called, I called the video something like 255 exposed, where I mentioned the stitching. And I say that in particular, this little stitch here and there, when you open the, the flap on the inside, the actual time, not the climb, oh, why am I keep saying, I actually, even the Timeless Classic should have it, but let's focus on the 255s. Um, they have this so-called horizontal stitch. So this is a vertical stitch, and then they also have a horizontal stitch after the vertical ones. I mean, I explained it in detail in that other video, so, but these don't have that. And actually... Chanel's manufacturing has become quite sloppy because all, most of their, you know, newer bags, even the Timeless Classics and the reissues, they don't ma make that effort anymore. Very rarely do you still see that horizontal stitch. On the minis, they don't do it at all. Sometimes they still do it on the double flaps. You know, the reissue, all the, the three main sizes of the reissue, they all have the double flap, the bag and bag concept, which makes them also cost much more. But I do prefer the single flap. I prefer it because the inner side doesn't have the zipper here in the pocket, and that zipper always dents the leather. In the case of the double flaps, it dents the second flap. Really irritates me, and I'm so happy that we have this version. And the Mini 255 is the only Mini that has the two grommets or rings. I call them rings, but people call them grommets. I just don't like the word grommets. It sounds like frogs. But anyway, like ribbit frog, grommet, I don't know, whatever. But um, yeah, so we got these two grommets, rings, rivets, no, they're not rivets actually, but let's just call them rings for the sake of elegance. The Timeless Classic minis, they're not supposed to be called Timeless Classic, but the square and rectangular minis with uh, double C locks, you see they all come only with two of these rings. And then the chains with the leather are attached to the side here. You can't do that with the pure metal chain. And just the nature of this chain, the links are so tight woven together, you can't really attach them to the side of the bag. It would be, it would damage the bag. But also I find it, in this case, so much more beautiful that you could choose to wear it double chain or single chain. But um, how beautiful is this color? Okay. So don't be worried that you only get the vertical stitch. That's, the, that's how they're made. The production has to be faster. Unfortunately, uh, um, and don't be worried about this bended part. The purer the leather, the form of the bag, and the more you're going to receive the bended version. I love this flat. It looks literally like it came out of a like a box, and it's been in a closet for for centuries even. And this is the fluffy version. So, next step, I wanted to talk about the perfumes that go with this bag. Smell-wise, just to give you an idea and an impression of what this kind of means to me, sim symbolically speaking, the two Chanel fragrances that match this bag the most. First, it's Paris Venice. I have reviewed this one. You could check out the review on my YouTube channel. I've also done a first impression of it, unboxing. Um, Paris Venice, it, because this bag is just Venice. It's, it's Chanel discovering the Renaissance paintings in Venice. It's Chanel discovering Baroque art in Venice. It's Chanel discovering the Byzantine art in Venice and the surrounding areas of Veneto. So Paris Venice, and also smell-wise, let's smell it quickly. Mm. Perfection. And the second perfume that represents this bag is the Haute Couture fragrance of Chanel. It's the 31 Rue Cambon. The Eau de Toilette, mind you. The Eau de Parfum is, oof, nasty. Nasty, nasty reformulation. Eau de Toilette. Smelling it now? Yeah. There's a, a velvety heaviness to this one. It's, it's like a, you could, you could say it's like a Baroque Fougère heaviness to it. Almost musty. It, it has almost a dusty, musty feeling of, kind of, of, of of, a, of an old mansion that, that is slightly moldy, but that mold doesn't smell bad. It smells like it's filled with 
opulence and resins and um and 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 floral residue of of wax and candles that have been scented and oils that have been used throughout the centuries on the wooden floors of this mansion and that kind of trickles through that smell ah oh, perfection these two are this bag in a nutshell so thank you guys so much for watching if uh, you are on patreon right now stay tuned for the continuation of this video but for my YouTube viewers, thank you so much for having stuck with me thus far. Check out also my Instagram profile, Super Decoball Spelled Together. I'm also on Twitter, Super Decoball Spelled Together, as well as on Patreon, Super Decoball Spelled Together. Until next time, thank you so much. Stay positive, stay healthy, don't panic. All bad things shall pass because we never give up on love. Love you all, see you soon, take care, bye.